Welcome to the Progress Kendo UI Builder 2.0 demo series. I'm Shelley Chase, your host and software fellow at Progress. In this series, we will demonstrate how to use the basic capabilities of Kendo UI Builder. This includes creating a data object service, building editable grids, using custom templates, working with foreign keys, parent-child views, and working with charts. Each video is about 10 minutes long and can be watched individually or as a series. Let's get started. In this session, you will see how to work with a foreign key field. On the back end, we will identify the foreign key in one table and its relationship to a record in another table. In Kendo UI Builder, we will use the grid form view to display both the key value and a value from the related record in the parent table. In a previous video, Creating a Data Object Service, we looked at creating business entities that could be used to expose our data and logic to the Kendo UI Builder. Our customer orders.cls class was a business entity that had a data set in it, and the data set is made up of two tables. So our customer orders data set is made up of TT customer and TT order. And if we look at those tables, we can see TT customer has a list of fields and TT order has another list of fields. We're interested in looking at the customer table. If you notice, there's two fields here which are actually keys into other tables. Sales rep is one of those fields and state is another one of those fields. Rather than duplicating the information in the customer table that's already in those other tables, sales rep and state, we just put the index in the customer table and then the values are actually in those other business entities. What we need to do in order to expose those and identify those as foreign keys is to define a new annotation for this class. We do that by using progress open edge define service interface. And in that define service interface, we can see that we're using customer orders.cls. We could check any uh, routine over here. Go to next. And what we're going to look at is our field annotations. So we have a list of temp tables here that we could see. We have TT customer and TT order. As I said, we're going to be focusing on TT customer. And then we have the list of fields that are available for TT customer. Let's start with our sales rep field. And the type of annotation we want to do is a foreign key. When we pick foreign key, we have some additional information that we have to put in there. So first we need to give our foreign key a name. We're gonna call this TT sales rep FK1. And that would actually be the default name that's given that's given by the Kendo UI Builder if we did not specify a name. You can use any name you want here. And then we need to pick what our parent table is, where our schema is for the parent table. And this will show us all of the different um, class files that we have available. We're gonna pick the sales rep .class file because that has the information we want. And now what you can see is we have a bunch of fields displayed for that TT sales rep table. And um, what we want to pick here is the field that matches the index that's in the TT customer table. So sales rep is picked by default since it's the only index and that's the one that we want to keep. So let's press apply and that annotation is shown to us at the bottom. We need to do that again for the state table. So we're going to pick the state field, keep, a foreign, keep it as a foreign key. We're going to name this one TT state. FK1, and now we're going to pick the state class. When we do that, we can see this information changes so that we have a parent table of TT state, and then the fields we get in the TT state table are state, state name, and region. Again, since there's only one index, the state, that is what's picked by default, and that's uh, fine for us to use. So let's apply that. We now have two foreign key annotations that we've added to the TT customer table for both the sales rep and the state foreign keys. So let's finish that. And what we can see happened is our file, our source file got two new lines added to it. They have, these are the annotations that are 
define the foreign key. So as you can see, it has the name that we gave it. It has the field in this table. It has the parent schema. And then it has the field uh, to use in the parent table. Same thing for state. We have our name that we used. The field is the state field. Parent is the TT state table. And then the parent field is state. So we are going to save that. And then we would need to regenerate our service. So we do that by editing that service. We already have all of our um, business entities checked off. By hitting Finish, that will add that information as soon as it publishes. That will add that information that we can take a look at in the browser. If we now take a look at the catalog that was generated for that service, we should see our foreign keys. So one thing you'll note is that we have, um, we have our TT state foreign key one identified. And we also have our TT sales rep foreign key one identified. And as you can see, these are in a section called foreign keys for the TT customer table. So this is the information that goes into the catalog that can now be used by the Kendo UI Builder. So let's go take a look at how we would use that in the Kendo UI Builder. I will go and open up the same app that we have been working with in this video, um, in this video series. If we look at our TT customer data source, what we can see is that we now have uh, our two fields added to that TT customer um, data source. We have TT sales rep FK1 and TT sales rep FK1, TT state FK1. These are both marked as lookup semantic types and that is uh, automatically set because those are uh, foreign key definitions are by, by definition lookup semantic types. So we will just save that. And let's go into our views and create a view where we can use our foreign keys. Let's pick, let's create a, um, a customer data grid form. And what that's going to have is our grid on the left-hand side and our form on the right-hand side. We have the uh, title, which we want to set to customer. We have the data source, which we want to set to TT customer. And now all of our fields will show up. We want to edit the grid columns for our grid. And we go and click on the edit button next to the grid columns and you can see the list of included fields. We want to only include a couple of fields in our grid. So let's include the name, the state, the sales rep, and the balance. Let's um, save that. Sales rep, actually, let's change the label to sales space rep. And now for the form fields, we want to identify what we want to edit in the form. Now, we don't need to edit the index fields. We only want to edit or select the foreign key display field that we have. So we're going to take sales rep and state out of the list of form fields. And we're going to leave in the lookup fields, the TT sales rep FK1 and the TT state FK1. I am going to move the state up with the address so that it is in the correct order on the form. Let's uh, change the labels for these. The labels by default are the, um, are the foreign key names, which is probably not what you want. So we're going to call this one state. And we're going to call this one sales rep. Let's save that. So now let's save our app, generate it, and preview. Oh, 
as our app is displayed, we have module one. We can go and see our new view called customer that has the information that we asked it, the columns that we asked it to have. If you notice here, the sales um, information and the state information are those keys. So the state is the two character abbreviation and the salesperson is three character initials. However, if we look over on the form, you can see that the state here that's represented is Indiana, right, the state name, and the sales rep is the full sales rep name. So when we go into edit, we want to make sure that we're still working with those values that are the full, um, the full display field, for example, the name of the state, so that if we pick Florida here, you will notice we get Florida, but back over here, this now changed to FL because that's really the, the value, the index that's being saved in the customer table. Similar for the sales record, if I pick, or the salesperson, if I pick Braun, then you can see my salesperson now is BBB. So when I save that, the updated information is in the, is displayed in the grid, which shows the indexes that are actually set. That's all there is for working with foreign keys. For more Kendo UI Builder tutorials, please visit the Kendo UI Builder webpage. Thank you for viewing. Here are additional Kendo UI Builder 2.0 resources for you to explore.